welcome. How are you doing, man? I'm doing great. Thank How you, you for doing? coming. Appreciate Thank it. You. Yes. Last time you didn't make it because what happened? Uh, tire blew out on the trail. It did? Yes, it yeah. did. How long did you wait for the fix? Oh, man. We're talking about five hours at least. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I saw, was it a, was it, was it a FedEx uh, trailer? <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to that. Yeah. Um, tell me, so if you could introduce briefly uh, yourself and tell me uh, uh, kind of about yourself a little bit. Yeah. I mean, I'm just one average guy. You know, okay. I was born in California, came to Chicago probably like 15 years ago because mm-hmm. uh, my wife. Um, just chill, basically. I mean... Okay. <laughs> so really you, you know. uh, own what? What you are an owner operator, right? Yes, sir. And uh, you are leased onto somebody, right? Yes, sir. And how? Tell me about what trucks do you have, and what got you into trucking? Okay, so I have both. Both my trucks are Volvos, mm-hmm. uh, V and Ls. Okay. And um, first one I bought was the automatic. It's two thousand six. The second one is uh, 2005 10 speed um what got me into trucking really was life basically um wasn't working out with college i wasn't working out nine to five so and plus i was in the military Mm -hmm. and so um i was doing uh the the army reserve and they had a job uh fair there and they had (laughs) i'll never forget it they had schneider they had, um, um, man, what's that other carrier that's like real bad? Uh, man, uh, I forgot the, you know, send their name, but they're like yeah, real bad. It, yeah. it. We're not going to talk <laughs> crap about people. Well, here, right? I'm sorry for the names, yeah, yeah. but uh, basically the orange people. Yeah, okay. okay. <laughs> uh, and um, two other ones. So one of them at that time was offering, <laughs> hold yourself. I'm 17 not, cents yeah. per mile. Yeah, yeah. I'm not surprised. <laughs> that was, uh, was that long? How long ago was that? Uh, let's see. I believe that was 2011, probably going okay. to 2010, going to 2011. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. So basically, I started with the orange people. Okay. Like this uh, tanker. So, I mean, that's how I, I got into trucking. Like I said, by accident. So you started driving in. At what point were you like, okay, I'm going to get in my own truck and be become an owner of oh two months into it really yeah i was like i i gotta get my own truck okay because me personally i don't like working for people yeah i like having my own little avenues and Mm -hmm. sitting there being my own person you know yeah so you decided i want to be an owner up and when did you pull the trigger on buying the first truck (sighs) two years after i started okay so two two years you were driving. Mm-hmm. Have you done? Were you prepping and like kind of digging into, or you just like, you yeah. know what, I'm just gonna buy a truck? No, I was prepping like hardcore, like really? for the state exam. Okay, oh, that's, <laughs> that's a good one. That's a good. Yeah, that's that's a good analogy. Uh, so, how were you prepping? What were you doing? I was you? looking at YouTube. I was just asking. When I stopped at the fuel station, mm-hmm. me, I'm a type of person, if I don't know, I'm going to ask a question. I'm very friendly. I'll go up. Hey, I see your truck. Uh, do you own it? Some people lie. Some people tell the truth. You know you know how that is. Yeah. You know, and I try to differentiate between the, mm, I don't know if I can curse. <laughs> um, that's fine. I'll beep it out. No, 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 no. I'm good. Uh, the kids are watching. You, you, right. you, you have kids too. So I, my, I know my kids are watching. Uh, between the liars, I would mm-hmm. say, you okay. know. So I'll just go up to the fuel station and ask them, like, okay, are you on our, all right? They say yes. What do you do? Like, how do you do it? Yeah. You know, what's the troubles? You know, and most of them would say, oh, don't do it. You know, it's a bad thing. Of course. Yeah. yeah. Someone would be like, yeah, go ahead. You know, you just got to know what you're doing and just be prepared for everything, you yeah. know. So yeah. I took the grain with the salt, you know, mm-hmm. and. I decided Stayed to stay focused on yeah. your on your dream and your path that you wanted to, to take. And so the first truck you bought was it? What was it? <laughs> it was a Kenworth T two thousand. Okay. Uh, yeah. Tell me about it. Why you're laughing? Because <laughs> oh man, dude. we have one in the shop. Did you see off, outside of the shop? There's one. Oh, honestly, I didn't see it. No. Yeah, no. it's Jose. It's Jose. It's Spring. not black, is it? No, it's okay. It's blue. <laughs> what, did you have issues with it? Oh man, I mean, it ran for a year. Okay, so. Uh, JX, yeah, yeah, on, and, yeah, and the Brolin yeah, book, yeah. okay. Bowling so yeah. yeah, 
So, um, oh man. Okay, so I bought Tell it. Me, so because I think <laughs> I, I want to keep it uh, on track w yeah. and because I know we could dig into it uh, and have some fun stories around that. But tell me um, like the biggest issue you had with it or, or what it helped you do. And then when did you switch to the next next truck? Because uh, remind me again. Sorry, because it was a 2005 Volvo you have right now. And the mm -hmm. other one is what year? 2006. Six. Okay. Mm -hmm. So they're all pre-DPF trucks. Yeah. Okay. So let's go back to the Kenworth. Uh, your Kenworth. Uh, 2010. T2000 was 2000. It, which what it was it, in 2010 no no the year was 2010 oh okay so okay. Uh, it didn't have the it had the dpf filter it had a dpf filter okay. yes and then in what year was it that you got that truck um i believe 2013 2013 okay so relatively new new equipment because uh, you were so you got it in 2013 yes no no no, 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 That's uh, that seems a little yeah, yeah. early, right? 2015, I believe. 2015. 15, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So if 2015, then that's 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 still a relatively five-year-old truck, uh, right? Yeah. So you had it. It was a two, the 2010. Do you remember engine and transmission? Cummings ISX. Okay. And so I'm assuming you got rid of it. The issues hmm. or no? issues bro a lot of issues right issues issues. Uh, let me guess emissions yes yeah <laughs> let's move on <laughs> yeah so yeah so so we all know how that goes and then so you're we like okay i gotta get, buy something else what made you did you go to volvos uh, to those pre-emission volvos and i i'll call them just to clarify because i know some guys will say those are not pre-emissions they're not they have egrs on them but right Still, I call them pre DPF. Let's talk, let's call them pre DPF. So, was that what you got after the Kenworth? Is that, were that the trucks that you got? That's the, the the ones that I initially bought. Yes, after the Kenworth. But I mean, with that Kenworth, it drugged me down. Yeah, really. Yeah, like I yeah. literally had to start over. Yeah, yeah. literally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so tell me how you how you went through that phase right you got a truck that has a lot of issues for you mm -hmm. it creates a lot of issues for you how did you how, how did you handle it how would you what was what was in your mind what was going through your mind that when you when you were going through this like i right, tell me about that man it was it was a nightmare so i bought the truck and i'm just remembering now it wasn't 2015 2017 okay yeah okay yeah, so sorry about that. That's fine. Totally fine. <laughs> I don't want to be a liar. You know, it's totally fine. It, it's, so, it's been a while. Yeah, yeah, it's been a while. I'm, that's one of the things I'm trying to forget. Yeah, it was yeah. that bad. So, um, that's what I would. Do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I bought the truck lasted for a year. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the engine blew out. Now, before that, I took it to a shop to get the uh, head gasket replaced. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, they did a terrible job off, off of it. I found out in Alabama. Mm -hmm. Now, the company that I was with prior to this was going through some trouble. So you're talking about problems stacked on problems stacked on problems. So they weren't even, um, I was uh, uh, leased on with them. They yeah. weren't even paying me at that time. Yeah. So I took out loans. Oh, wow. Yes. Okay. And I had other drivers with me. So I took out the loans and I started paying them. Mm -hmm. And then the engine blew out in Alabama. I literally did not have a dollar to my name. Yeah. Did, did you figure out why the engine blew out? Did, did, did anybody tell you uh, what was the they, cause? They said the engine locked. Mm -hmm. But um, the reason why I did the head gasket, I tried to, well, they tried to fix it was because I was losing a lot of coolant. Mm-hmm. And so yeah. I researched it, and it's head, you know head gasket. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so tell me more. What happened then? <laughs> so basically, uh, my wife, love her to death. She somehow got money together, flying me back to Chicago, and basically I had to start all over, like from scratch. I mean, it was bad. I mean, you're talking about. Grown man not crying. Yeah. I cried. I'm not going to lie. No. Yeah, I, <laughs> I had those things. Yeah. I cried. 
I mean, I cried. And I tried going on with other carriers, and it was just more BS on top of BS on top mm-hmm. of BS. So I just said, forget it. I'm going to go back to the fundamentals, start driving, mm-hmm. clear my head, and start rethinking everything that I need to rethink what I did wrong. So that way, if, when I do it again, I'm not going to make those same mistakes because I'll recognize it. Mm-hmm. And I love that. So when you started thinking about jumping in again, mm-hmm. wh- how did you start and what were the mistakes that you were trying not to repeat? So a funny story about that is that I was even ready. My wife was like, you got to do this again. I'm tired of you being a company driver. Yeah, I'm yeah. tired of you, you know, like this, like that's not you. You yeah, know, yeah. you're an entrepreneur. Yeah. I know you can do it. And I was telling her, like, no, I'm done. I was defeated, bro. I yeah. was defeated mm-hmm. big time. And thank God to her like this, like, dude, she's my rock, everything. That's awesome. She pushed me. She's like, dude, you got to do it. You got to yeah. do it. You got to do it. See, look at it. See, you could be, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So we finally did it. I mean, it took us like six months. We were just looking, 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 looking for a truck. Mm-hmm. Finally found one, checked out everything. And then uh, we bought it cash. That's one thing that, you know, I'm not trying to pay payments no more. I'm, if I don't have the money for it, I'm not buying it. So we bought it cash. So lesson one, you, yep. you didn't want to finance, you went to cash. Mm-hmm. To have it, okay. Right. right. Uh, second lesson was maintenance. First time I had it, I wasn't real big on maintenance. You know, I mean, like little things here and there, but I was always fixing things because I was more over the road at this time. Mm-hmm. I was always fixing things over the road. So I knew that it costs more to have people come to you than you to go to people. Mm-hmm. You know, maintenance intervals, make sure everything is straight and good. Of course, mm-hmm. things are going to break down, of course, mm-hmm. you know, but just make sure that it's your baby. Like, this is your money maker. You have to take care of it. Yeah. That was lesson number two. Lesson number three, don't overthink things yeah. <laughs> at all. It's going to happen mm-hmm. no matter what, yeah. you know. And basically, I mean, I'm still learning, you yeah. know. I mean, I mean, I have my dates right, <laughs> yeah. but uh, yeah. I've only been driving for six years. Yeah. But you've been an owner up for how long? Uh, I would say out of the six years, probably three and a half. Okay. So, see, you've been successfully owning it being an owner operator for three years mm-hmm. that is significant because usually the first to to second year is the hardest that where people usually get out of business right, right. because they failed because of whatever reason the trucks you bought after the kenworth the first truck you bought going into it the second time what was the truck that you bought that was the 2005 volvo 10 speed okay what engines in it uh, that's the one that comes ISX. Okay. The, uh, the other one has a Volvo engine. The D12. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, what's, what's your... Have you... Why did you buy those trucks? Okay. Well, well let's start with the first one. Why did you buy the first truck that, that, that ISX comments? The first truck has the Volvo. Oh, the, the so second o, so one has the ISX. Okay, the Cummins. second one has the yeah. ISX. So you bought the D12 first or the Cummins first? I bought the D12 first. D12 first, okay. Yeah. So so why did you... Uh, I didn't know that, by the way. I wanted to clarify that. Because <laughs> no, it's okay. uh, when Jen talked to you, I um, they, I never... I I do want to know what trucks usually owners yeah. do, but uh, I like that. And so, so why did you... So cause I like that because... That's the D12, which is, I talk highly, you know, about the, 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 the truck, yeah. right? And yes. then that's another example that you can make it work with a truck like that, right? Right. Yeah. So tell me about that when you bought it. Oh, man, that one's my money maker for sure. Yeah. I mean, no problems with it. Um, funny story about that one is that, we, of course, me and my wife is looking six months like mm-hmm. this, and we found it. Got a steal from it. I'm not embarrassed about it. Yeah. It was on Craigslist. Yeah. Uh, the guy was trying to sell it for uh, 10. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, I had a million miles on it, but I already knew that we're going to do it local, mm-hmm. you know? Okay. And we already had money saved aside just in case anything happened, also. Mm-hmm. So uh, my wife said, gee. <laughs> we went there and um, saw the guys. It was two guys, I guess they're a team, and they just wanted to get rid of the truck. Mm-hmm. So my wife talked them down. They originally posted for 10000 
my wife talked him down to 7,800. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> that's a steal. I'm telling you, she's a G. Yeah. She's, she's that's a G. That's awesome. Yeah. So we paid him cash. <laughs> Why isn't she here? She should come with you. <laughs> next time, next time. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> um, we paid him cash, you know, did the whole IRP thing, you know, uh, exchange titles and all other stuff. And, you know, um, it had a little, little mind stuff, had to fix the, um, I'm not mechanically uh, educated, the drive shaft. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, we had to fix that, a couple of tires, mm-hmm. and it was good. That's the automatic one, mm-hmm. okay. uh, the one with the uh, Eaton. Yeah, Eaton 10 speed, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, perfect. So then you started rolling with that. Yes, sir. And, and, and then... So congrats on, well, what I'm trying to ask you, congrats on going a good truck. Thank and you. And doing a great deal on that. And Thank you. We'll wait for the second one. <laughs> so, so, so we'll get to the second one, but what, what I would like to, were you, did you know what you were buying or was it more of a luck? Kind of, well, with everything you do, even if you know 100%, yeah. you, you know, 80-20, mm-hmm. 80% knowledge, 20% luck, mm-hmm. you know, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Basically, yeah. that's what happened, you yeah. know? Yeah. Good. Um, okay. And then the, the second truck has the comments in it. Yes, sir. Is it a manual or transmission? Manual. Uh, manu- manual transmission. Uh, okay. And okay. So tell me about that when you bought that. All right. And so then so, so hold, hold on. I don't want to speed it up too much. No, no. You're good. When you, when you bought the first one, how long did it take you to buy the second one? Man, you about to shake your head. Two months. Okay, perfect. <laughs> and you already you know those like, stimulus checks helped out. Yeah. <laughs> See, but you were like already thinking, okay, how do I get this scale up, right? Right. You're thinking about building a fleet. You're, you're thinking, and because you released to somebody, right? Yes. I just want to clarify that. Oh, also, when I uh, had my first truck, I did have my authority. Oh, okay. Yeah, there you yeah. go. Okay, interesting. Uh, nice. So let's let's we'll get back to that. So w- you are now with your first truck leased to somebody. Now you're you're thinking about second truck. You bought it after two months, and tell me about buying that, that buying buying that second truck. Same thing, Craigslist. Um, this time it was all the way in the north side, and uh, the guy was trying to sell it for nine thousand. So we first originally you know went out there. Of course you know I had a couple of problems and everything else like that. My wife told him, "Hey, listen." Six thousand. I'm not telling you, man. She's a G. Yeah. He was like, no, 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 no. She's like, dude, ain't nobody gonna buy this truck. (laughs) Two days later, he's calling. Okay, I'll do it for Uh, (laughs) six thousand. So that's how we got the second one. But the second one is a little heartbreaker. That's the one where I had to do the bearings in it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, Let's see what else I had to do with it. Uh, Rod, you did rod bearings. Mm -hmm. Um, So. Just to like, I just hate Cummings, but j- but just to outline it, that's exactly w- you're a good example because people tell me, oh, you know, we think the Cummings is better than than D12 on those Volvos. Um, <laughs> I, I personally think, Cummins. and I, I and I don't. So I don't hate Cummings. I don't want to because of he, the difference because of the, the design and how Cummings in 2006 pre uh, uh, emissions. There were they, they still have bearing issues. Mm-hmm. It's just the design that Cummins says. So if you know when you're ahead of it, that's what we're with Jose. You probably I don't know if you've heard it. We've been telling everybody that comes here for pre inspect pre purchase inspection. So we've held by a truck. We tell them if you're buying a Cummins, do the rod bearings if, you, if you're at that six hundred thousand mile plus, uh, and, and just forget about them because that's 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 just how they are. Yeah, and just you know I driving and learning about trucks within in my career i knew that about uh, i le- i found that out i learned uh, talking to mechanics right but i i would still rather have a d12 because you never like you don't even you don't you don't even know that d12 has bearings that's you don't even think about Man. that you know what i mean it's, it's, like, it's totally two different engines bro yeah and tell me your mileage on them just so we know uh they're high like this they're in yeah. the millions okay yeah, yeah which is which is i mean i i say d12 can get to two million. I've yeah. seen, seen it. Uh, Cummins, not so much. But uh, perfect. So the second one, <clears throat> but it is still you're still operating the truck years mm-hmm. into it. Uh, you're still putting money into it. You have a relationship with a shop that helps you. And we've talked about it briefly. You have a driver in that second truck. 
somebody yes. else driving it? Yes. Okay, so you you drive one, and then the other one is uh, is your driver. Yes. Okay. How long? How how how's how was that experience? How was buying a second truck and putting a driver in it help? Uh, how Man, it'll just autopilot. It? To be honest, I mean, I'm still just kind of like on autopilot. I really haven't had a chance to sit there and like think about it, mm-hmm. you know, and dwell about it. But I mean, pretty sure like everybody else do a Craigslist ad. Mm-hmm. Craigslist ad. Uh, he's been with you for some time. Yeah, he's been with me since May. Okay. Since May. Okay. Um. He's a good driver. He's a good driver. Um, and what operations do you guys do? What type of operation is it? Mostly local, some regional. Okay. FedEx was a regional. Okay. Um, power only load. You yeah. get, you got it from the company. Right. Hey, power only. Move this. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. No, I don't own no. Yeah. No vans. Yeah. No trailers. No nothing. Yeah. Perfect. So, would you say I you? You can buy more trucks. Of course. Really? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. So what have you learned? So what do you know now, right? As a seasoned owner up. Just take it, man. Just take it slow. You know, yeah. you don't have to rush. You're not going to know everything. Ask questions. You know, you're going to have your good days. You're going to have your bad days, you know, and if you're just in it for the money, then honestly get out of it because you're going to have to love what you do. Mm-hmm. To, to make it in here honestly I mean like like I told you before it was by accident but I mean I still love what I do yeah. I still love it I may hate the trucking part about it I may hate the bad yeah. parts but who doesn't yeah yeah, yeah. you I know mean, there's always a component to right it. but I mean at the end of the day I mean this is what moves America this is what mm-hmm. feeds my family this is what feeds other people's family I mean what really gives me goosebumps and just for me is that I know that I can help other people out and employ them and make sure that they're eating on their table, supporting their families, which, you know, supporting them by them supporting their family and Mm -hmm. everybody having, you know, saying a great time, you know? So what's your, uh, vision for the next few years? You're buying more trucks. My vision for the next two years is hopefully getting the truck every six months. Okay. Just one truck. I'm not talking about like getting three. Yeah. Just one, you know, just building it slowly. You know, okay. six months, see how that truck runs, if it needs any maintenance, see how it does, get a driver on there, mm-hmm. see how that driver does, you know. What trucks are you going to look at? Pre emissions. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you said it right there. I didn't say it. And that's good. So, are you thinking about jumping into your own MC, your own, getting your own authority? Me and my wife talked about that. Um, once we get to five trucks, I think that'll be a good small enough fleet to where when we do and we start talking to other um, other companies and try to get contracts, mm-hmm. that'll be a good enough uh, size to where it's not too small to where they'll deny us and it's not too big to where we'll be overwhelmed, mm-hmm. you know? Okay. So, yeah, definitely, definitely the next step is getting our own MC. Okay, interesting. So, if... Would you say that emissions the first time around made it a lot harder for you to succeed with that truck? It wasn't so much the uh, emissions. I just think that I just had a bad luck. And it was mostly my fault for not Mm -hmm. keeping the maintenance up. But I just have an issue generally with the DPS and the DEFs and everything Mm -hmm. because... The technology, I mean, even though they might say it, but the technology is not there. Mm-hmm. I mean, why is it that these, you know, trucking has been up along for hundreds of years since, what, the 1900s? Yeah. And really, the only problem you had was mechanical, and then you put these things on there, mm-hmm. and then they're just a headache. It's, it, it's complicated. Right. Yeah. It complicates it tremendously, hence truck you and why we're sharing experience and um you so you you you're pretty sure you're going to look at, at pre-emissions do you have in mind are you were you thinking about specific trucks that you're going to look at or i mean honestly before i was mostly a kenworth guy yeah you know but i mean just being around uh chicago anybody <laughs> from chicago already knows mm-hmm. volvo gang all day mm-hmm. <laughs> i know right <laughs> And people label us too as Volvo, and uh, I saw some guys. Well, like, 
not only we don't service outside trucks anymore that I don't have any agenda or promoting them. You know, we have a fleet of Volvos just because I choose to. I, I like mean, them. They're, they're, they're comfortable trucks. Right. right. I mean, not for anything. It's like, yeah, they may not be pretty. They may not, you know, saying look good, you know, to certain people. But, dude, they're workhorses, yeah. man. They, yeah. They're going to get you from point A to point B. Yeah. And they're all and they're all over uh, Chicago, so that they always say it depends where you live. Right. You know? uh, it's a tool for us because the tool actually works in the area that we're in. But if you're somewhere else, look at a Peterbilt. It can work, but right. but keep the principles. Make sure that the truck is well taken care of, and it's either pre-emission or you actually know what the maintenance of the emissions was when you're buying the truck. Because right. the first Kenworth that you bought, it had the dpf filter and and it wasn't deleted right no 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 no. yeah and it had the uh, egr okay yeah egr and dpf because that was a 2010 there was a 2010 uh year model Mm -hmm. 2010 Mm -hmm. okay so it was right before scr you didn't have to put definite right no you wouldn't put yeah so there was uh, had that big old filter yeah yeah just so dpf filter and and egr were by 2010 and then 2010 2011 model model year they introduced the scr in the the next thing had that they attached to it was scr so it's like i wish i would have known you six years ago man. yeah (laughs) so we so without see but that's the thing when i was driving i was listening to people that were talking about emissions already that's how i learned right Mm. and that's what helped me say build what i built right it's not it's it you know there is that's the stories like yours is something that i want to get out there but what are we going to do about it well we're getting into you know 2020s heavily it's very hard to find pre-emission trucks right now oh yes unless you go to uh, classics and start restoring them and all that right but i want to talk about it because i want to i would like i want to see the formula and i want to talk about the formula of people that are in the business and treat the truck as an asset it's something that you can rebuild mm-hmm. uh, and take you can take care of it and it's going to serve you well for a long time right, right. Um, perfect and what I was going to conclude on is would you do it again all day yeah all day I'll do it again awesome cool. not even hesitation no yeah. hesitation good I, we didn't talk about a few things. Uh, I do want to do part one with part two with you uh, at some point. I would want to dig into uh, other relationships and and especially shop uh, and other experiences. Mm-hmm. But thanks for coming, man. I appreciate you with sharing your experience. And, oh, no problem. And we'll shoot some videos when you stop by. I want to shoot some uh, with your trucks. And yeah, thank you for coming, man. Oh, all day. Appreciate it. Thanks. <laughs>